Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hi everyone, Matt Denapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 110 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10 minute bite of learning, coding, and just some cool stuff we want, we think you should know. And the cool thing we're gonna talk to you about today is CX Cloud with our colleague, Tiffany Pham. Tiffany, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Hi everyone, I'm Tiffany Pham. I'm a senior business analyst for the experience design and incubation team. Well, welcome to Snack Minute. So, um, we're talking about CX Cloud today. Yep. Uh, and potentially PX Cloud, I guess. Um, can you tell us what CX Cloud is? So first, CX Cloud means Customer Experience um, Cloud, and then PX Cloud is Partner Experience Cloud. Oh, okay, cool. So it's the customer facing versus partner facing. It's a cloud application that really helps um, the user manage their IT operations. So we get actionable insights for them to be able to manage their assets, manage their adoption lifecycle, manage their cases. Oh, that's that's really cool. So. Um, we provide this application, and they have. Uh, we, we're we're able to see insights into it. what devices that they have on site, what potential software uh, they have running in their yeah. in their data centers, and we're able to uh, provide them information um, from their actual running instances uh, and, and let them know how things are going, and and provide them access to updates to licenses or firmware. Is, is that am I getting that? Yeah. Right? So before they um, provide that before we provide them insights into their um, devices, they need to be able to send us the telemetry information. Oh, okay. So in order to do that, they'd have to um, connect the devices to either a collector okay. or a CX Cloud agent. Okay. And a collector is essentially like a physical device that goes into the customer's network? No, it's a virtual machine that okay. basically pulls, it's a software, okay. so it pulls the information from the device. Um, one great one is DNAP, right? So the, right. the digital network architecture appliance. Um, that's the best, like the souped up version. And then of course, if they want to just be able to pull in the information, they can just do it on the CX Cloud agent, um, to install the agent onto the hardware device itself. They pull through it, um, simple network management protocol and then SSH for connectivity. That's cool. Tell us a little bit about what is the benefit of CX Cloud to the customer. So I'm a customer, I have a bunch of Cisco inventory, I'm running a you know, multi-site network, um, how do I leverage CX Cloud to my benefit outside of Cisco knowing what I have and, and being on top of license upgrades and, and whatnot? So what else can I do there? Yeah, so one of the challenges that um, a lot of our customers have when they're trying to transition to new technology is adoption, right? So CX Cloud really gives them user-guided journey. Nice. Um, it allows them to understand the learning documentations that they need to in order to get to that acceleration and adoptions above and beyond the asset and coverage aspects of it. But it's really an integrated user interface that allows them to be able to pull in information like their current case status, any security advisories, field notices, bug fixes that we are sending out as part of the product lifecycle insights. So it's a very holistic, unified experience for them. And it's also part of, uh, or in support, I should say, of our package services. So as you know, how CX Cloud gets, how they get access to CX Cloud is through Success Track. Have right. you heard of Success Track? Sure. I kind of on the side, I'm not as familiar with it as Kareem is, <laughs> but he's smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's been proven many times. But yeah, um, I've, so Success Track are essentially where the customer's adoption of Cisco's product is on a life cycle, essentially. And we yeah. have, like, to, to my understanding, within a Success Track, you have different life cycle definitions, which are the use cases that are defined for a specific technology that the customer has in that network. Like DNA Center has a set of lifecycle definitions that are part of that success track, and then you see where the customer is on that racetrack. That's absolutely correct. So today we have four success track. Um, we have one for campus network. We have data center network, or sorry, cloud network, data center compute. We also have integrated secure operations, which is part of our AMP for endpoints. Right. Um, those are the four that are currently out in the market. Mm -hmm. We're definitely working on more, as well as supporting other strategic offers. So today, it's sort of the digital interface for the success track, but tomorrow, we're going to be bringing in Cisco Plus, as a service, all of these other offers that are kind of coming to market. And, uh, and Matt, the next logical step for us, we've been talking about Cisco U for a while, <laughs> right? We know what the customer has yes. in, their, in their infrastructure, uh -huh. and we know where they live on that life cycle, so the next logical step would be to allow these customers to see where um, they're training and where do they need to upscale based on their life cycle, where they sit on the, that success track. 
Yeah. Yes. Thank you for explaining that to me. <laughs> and the beauty of it is that if, if you're buying through a partner, the partner also gets that contextualized learning right. um, path Well, that was well. going to be my next, the, yeah. the PX portion of this conversation. Yeah. Um, can you give us some insight into that? Yeah, absolutely. So the partner, if they sell a success track to the customer, they get PX Cloud almost for free okay. right, as part of sort of that, that package. And for partners to be able to manage sort of the customer lifecycle okay. management piece of it, how well their customers are adopting the technology, that's sort of the benefits for the, the partner. Now, obviously, certain partners are organized so that they're specializing in certain technologies. So sometimes they need certifications. Right. And so uh, as part of the adoption and integration piece of it, we are also not only training the customer, but we're training the partner who are selling to our customers, okay. uh, which is why Cisco U is so beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, is there going to be a certification path for that? Not for CX Cloud. There's, okay. Yeah, it's, it's being able to offer the cert different certification paths for the customer based on what we know from okay. the information. It's really meeting them sense. sort of the, in the just-in-time learning aspects, exactly. right? Yeah, okay. right? Sometimes they just need that extra little boost to get over the hurdle of adopting the DNAP, for example. Okay. And so one offer is personalization of for that individual, but then also the ability to customize it so that at the organization level, you know, let's say Kareem's my manager, he can nudge me and say, you know, you really need to take the next step to, to get the certification for security because our next rollout's gonna be security focused. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So it, it actually plays really nicely together once once you and it's all integrated. Um, so being part of the developer relations team, I do have to ask, are there APIs available for both these services? The APIs at the moment, it's in the works. Okay. Um, so we definitely know that, at least on the partner side, that's what we've been hearing a lot. Okay. Partners like, these are such amazing you know, features and capabilities. For us as partners, we really want to kind of beef up the partner APIs that are available because they want to be able to just ingest right, the information. Yeah. Um, and so we're working on it. Yeah, for sure. and if they're a managed services partner, I could see that even extending beyond absolutely. The, and the we regular are regular sales cycle. It's now how do I maintain my customer solutions and make sure that I have visibility into to how Cisco's providing absolutely. Um, if you're a managed service, you know, service provider or managed service partner, you really want to be able to be in that mix, right? right exactly. And so we are um, talking to quite a few of them. Um, we have something in development right now, and yeah. hopefully we'll be able to tell them a little bit more in a couple. of months or so. Okay, that sounds good. See, Matt, you know a thing or two. I did. <laughs> I did a smart. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Tiffany, I mean, this has been an excellent, I, this is a whole world that I actually don't really work in too much, so this is very interesting to me. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, we are running out of time, and so we do have to save this. You are a first-time guest on Snack Minute, yeah. um, and we ask all of our first-time guests, um, what superpower would you have and why? I think my superpower would be invisibility. But why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I play kind of a fly on the wall anyway, so I think being invisible will allow me to listen into conversations oh, nice. and get that privy. Um, so that, yeah. What, what about you? She's just approaching it for so she could do her job better. Exactly. Right. <laughs> I'm very strategic about it. <laughs> um, well, that's all the time we have. Uh, thank you, Tiffany, for joining us uh, this week on Snack Minute. And thank you, Snackers. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, Snackers. Thank you, Snackers.